Section 2, God's Program for His Church. Chapter 3, Isaiah 58, A Divine Prescription. The Chapter That Defines Our Work. The whole of the 58th chapter of Isaiah is to be regarded as a message for this time, to be given over and over again. Special Testimonies, Series B, Number 2, Page 5. What saith the Lord in the 58th chapter of Isaiah? The whole chapter is of the highest importance. Testimony, Volume 8, Page 159. I have been instructed to refer our people to the 58th chapter of Isaiah. Read this chapter carefully and understand the kind of ministry that will bring life into the churches. The work of the gospel is to be carried by means of our liberality as well as our labors. When you meet suffering souls who need help, give it to them. When you find those who are hungry, feed them. In doing this will be a blessing in lines of Christian ministry. The Master's holy work was a benevolent work. Let our people everywhere be encouraged to have a part in it. Manuscript 7, 1908 The Work Outline Please read Isaiah 58. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day of the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that thou art cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rear reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in draught, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. This is a special work now before us. All our praying and abstinence from food will avail nothing unless we absolutely lay hold of this work. Sacred obligations are resting upon us. Our duty is plainly stated. The Lord has spoken to us by his prophet. The thoughts of the Lord and his ways are not what blind, selfish mortals believe that they are or wish them to be. The Lord looks on the heart. If selfishness dwells there, he knows it. We may seek to conceal our true character from our brethren and sisters, but God knows nothing can be hid from Him. The fast which God can accept is described. It is to deal thy bread to the hungry and to bring the poor which are cast out to thy house. Wait not for them to come to you. The labor rests not on them to hunt you up and entreat of you a home for themselves. You are to search for them and bring them to your house. You are to draw out your soul after them. You are with one hand to reach up, and by faith take hold of the mighty arm which brings salvation, while with the other hand of love you reach the pressed and relieve them. It is impossible for you to fasten upon the arm of God with one hand, while the other is employed in ministering to your own pleasures. If you engage in this work of mercy and love, Will the work prove too hard for you? Will you fail and be crushed under the burden and your family be deprived of your assistance and influence? Oh, no. God has carefully removed all doubt about this question by a pledge to you on condition of your obedience. This promise covers all that the most exacting, the most hesitating could crave. 
Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Only believe that he is faithful that hath promised. God can renew the physical strength, and more, he says, he will do it. And the promise does not end there. Thy righteousness shall go forth before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. God will build a fortification around thee. The promise does not stop even here. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If you put down oppression and remove the speaking of vanity, if you draw out your soul to the hungry, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought or famine, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. Testimonies, Volume 2, pages 33 to 35. The Twofold Reform of Isaiah 58. The work specified in these words in Isaiah 58 is the work God requires his people to do. It is a work of God's own appointment, with the work of advocating the commandments of God and repairing the breach that has been made in the law of God. We are to mingle compassion for suffering humanity. We are to show supreme love to God. We are to exalt his memorial, which has been trodden down by unholy feet. And with this, we are to manifest mercy, benevolence, and the tenderest pity for the fallen race. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. As a people, we must take hold of this work. Love revealed for suffering humanity gives significance and power to the truth. Special Testimonies, Series A, Number 10, Pages 3 and 4. A True Interpretation of the Gospel It is only by an unselfish interest in those in need of help that we can give a practical demonstration of the truths of the gospel. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Much more than mere sermonizing is included in preaching the gospel. The ignorant are to be enlightened, the discouraged are to be uplifted, the sick are to be healed. The human voice is to act its part in God's work. Words of tenderness, sympathy, and love are to witness to the truth. Earnest, heartfelt prayers are to bring the angels near. The Lord will give you success in this work. It is interwoven with the practical life when it is lived and practiced. The union of Christ-like work for the body and Christ-like work for the soul is the true interpretation of the gospel. Review and Herald March 4, 19.2. The counsel is explicit. I have no fears of workers who are engaged in the work represented in the 58th chapter of Isaiah. This chapter is explicit and is enough to enlighten anyone who wishes to do the will of God. There is plenty of opportunity for everyone to be a blessing to humanity. The third angel's message is not to be given a second place in this work, but is to be one with it. There may be, and there is, a danger of bearing up the great principles of truth when doing the work that is right to do. This work is to be to the message what the hand is to the body. The spiritual necessities of the soul are to be kept prominent. Letter 24, 1898. Our God-Appointed Work I cannot too strongly urge all our church members, all who are true missionaries, all who believe the third angel's message, all who turn away their feet from the Sabbath to consider the message of the 58th chapter of Isaiah. The work of beneficence enjoined in this chapter is the work that God requires his people to do at this time. It is a work of his own appointment. We are not left in doubt as to where the message applies and the time of its marked fulfillment, for we read, they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt rise up 
the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Verse 12. God's memorial, the seventh day Sabbath, the sign of his work in creating the world, has been displaced by the man of sin. God's people have a special work to do in repairing the breach that has been made in his law. And the nearer we reproach the end, the more urgent this work becomes. All who love God will show that they bear his sign by keeping his commandments. When the church accepts its God-given work, the promise is, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rear reward. Testimonies, Volume 6, pages 265 to 267.